My name is Jesse Schley, and I am in my final year at the University of Pennsylvania Law School. Today, I will be discussing the case of National Federation of Independent Business, or NFIB, for Sibelius. In 2010, Congress enacted the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, or the ACA, often called Obamacare. The goal of the ACA was to increase the number of Americans covered by health insurance and to reduce the cost of health care. The act contained two provisions of relevance, an individual mandate and a Medicaid expansion provision. The individual mandate required individuals, except those who were exempt or received health insurance through their employer or a government program, to purchase a minimum level of health insurance from a private company. If they failed to do so, they would have to pay a penalty to the IRS when they paid their normal taxes. The Medicaid provision required states to accept its expansion in their state in order to continue receiving federal funds for Medicaid. The expansion broadened the scope of the Medicaid program and increased the number of people that the states must cover. If the state failed to accept the expansion, they could lose their existing federal funding for Medicaid. For most states, these funds constitute over 10% of the state's total revenue. Shortly after the ACA was passed, a handful of states sued in the District Court for the Northern District of Florida, seeking a declaration that the ACA was unconstitutional. Later, the National Federation of Independent Business, more states, and a few individual plaintiffs joined the suit. The party Sibelius is Kathleen Sibelius, who was the United States Secretary of Health and Human Services at the time. The District Court ruled that the individual mandate was unconstitutional. Thus, the entire act was invalid because the mandate could not be severed from other provisions. On the issue of Medicaid expansion, the court ruled in favor of the government, finding that there was insufficient evidence that the expansion was unconstitutionally coercive and violated the sovereignty of the several states. The case was appealed to the 11th Circuit, which affirmed the individual mandate was unconstitutional and that Medicaid expansion was not unconstitutional. However, it reversed the district court's finding about severability, and they held that the mandate could be severed without invalidating the remainder of the ACA. Two of the key issues before the court, and that you must now consider, were, is the individual mandate unconstitutional? And if so, does Congress get its power from the Commerce Clause or the Taxing and Spending Clause? And two, is the Medicaid expansion unconstitutional? meaning can the, can the federal government force states to expand the availability of Medicaid? To answer these questions, considering the following provisions of the Constitution. The Commerce Clause, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, authorizes Congress to regulate commerce with foreign nations among the several states and with the Indian tribes. Basically, it allows Congress to pass laws that regulate commerce amongst the states. The Taxing and Spending Clause, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 1, provides that Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes, to pay de the debts, and to provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States. Congress may exercise the powers that the Constitution grants it, subject to the individual rights listed in the Bill of Rights. These are known as the enumerated powers of Congress. In addition to the specifically delegated powers given to Congress, Article 1, Section 8 provides that Congress shall have the power to make all laws that shall be necessary and proper for the carrying into execution of the foregoing powers. Federalism, or the division of powers, is one of the most important and innovative concepts to the Constitution, although the word federalism never appears itself. It asserts that both federal government and state governments are sovereign. Federalism is the sharing of power between both these national government and the state governments. Americans still debate about the proper role of the national government versus the states. Consider whether or not the federal government wields too much power when it con conditions state funding on a way that the state must run their Medicaid programs. So, what arguments do you have about the constitutionality of the Affordable Care Act? <laughs>